stage of China Accelerator um, many, many years ago, in 2011, when I did my first startup, failed completely. <laughs> it was so bad. I don't even dare talk about it. It was, it was in a, uh, it was, I was trying to go up against secret at that time. So now you know why, why I failed and not big deal. Uh, so um, but today I'm going to talk about how I experimented in the few recent endeavors. Um, in the past, what I did was I always, uh, after my failed experiment, I was I was very rejected. I went to work in corporate. I worked for my biggest competitor, Secret, and then I worked for Hilton, where I was very um, I was always very honored to have a chance to lead the entire Greater China team in sales and marketing. Um, and after that, I felt like I was talking to developers every day, real estate developers. And we tried to make the, the buildings more eco-friendly. We, uh, we tried to make changes in our operating ways. And the developers were like, yeah, OK, let's do it. You know, yeah, no, okay. How much money do you need? Let's go, let's go. And we're like, OK, I couldn't find any suppliers who could help me with this. There just wasn't anyone. It was something that money couldn't solve. Um, that was that was a problem, and then we realized that maybe I should come up and do something myself. But what should I do? I had no idea. So I knew that I wanted to come up to do a business. It was in my blood. It had to be in sustainability. I had no idea where to start. So I took a look at the UN SDG goals. There are many of them, and I looked at it to kind of have a better, clearer idea of of you know when you want to do something good, what does that mean? Like is that you want to do with poverty, you want to do with education, you want to do with the environment. It's not just about the polar bears, you know, it's it's really um, there, there's so many aspects to it. So when I didn't know what to do, I was lost. I volunteered my time as a mentor and at that time I was still in Hilton. Um, I was very lucky to have a chance to mentor at Impact Hub, whose founder is right here as well. Um, at Impact Hub is a social entrepreneurship hub. Um, I got to meet a lot of startups uh, who were in that space. I helped them with their uh, marketing and sales and commercial strategies, things like that. And after doing three one-hour sessions, six months in a row, rain, shine, stuck in traffic, travel, everything, 78 hours, and about 26 companies, I decided, okay, maybe I get a better feel now. Um, I, at that time, I decided to narrow down my uh, focus into either sustainability companies, in education companies, or my old, my old traditional field of travel and hospitality. So I met, met 26 of these companies, all of them. Uh, very varying different uh, qualities. And um, I thought I wanted to start this session with showing you my uh, this book. It's actually my daughter's good night storytelling book. It's called The First Journey. It's about a Vietnamese kid that has to paddle through the lakes by himself in the middle of the night. And the, my favorite part of the book is the way is lost in the rain, and so I wait. When it's raining, you stay where you are. You don't try to go and you know force yourself in the rain. You get wet, you get sick, whatever. And, you, and then you end up doing circles. When it's raining, you stop and you wait. Actually, in entrepreneurship, it's, it's a lot about the same thing. But sometimes with our personalities, I'm very like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And so I have to remind myself to stop and wait and check and make sure that the direction is right before I go. So while I was, uh, as part of my experiments, six months later, a, a baby later, um, I decided that I think it's time to start on these experiments. So as I said just now, one in travel, one in education, and one in sustainability. So I did one of each. Honestly, I was most aggressive with the Green Future courses. This is a um, I was thinking about, inspired by my, my, my daughter, I was thinking about environmental schools. Um, there was this green school in Bali that I really cared about. There was Brightworks in San Francisco. 
uh, where all your, your Google and PayPal CEOs send their kids to alternative education that's very cool. I wanted to bring that to China, so I started experimenting by bringing, a, uh, like, bringing these environmental education teachers into China and to do workshops. I tried so hard. We put in um, not that much money, but okay. We managed to break even with a grand total of 10 signups. 10, that's how. I used out all my media contacts, it was in every single magazine. 10 signups. The market just wasn't ready. It died and crashed and burned, and that's it. Like, it fizzled. Nobody even heard about it. And then, I have Camphor Tree Valley, which is an eco guest house I have in Ningbo. We're very blessed. It's, um, it's right by the river where, where we actually have a water mineral bo bottling, water bottling factory right there. The water is so clean, you wouldn't imagine that it's in China. And uh, it's an eco guest house. We have uh, on-site composting, we have a lot of educational stuff. Um, we have uh, eco picnic riverside camps and, and whatnot. It's, it's small, but you know what? It turned out to be a really good cash cow. So it's, it's not going to make me rich. It's just a guest house. It's 30 rooms. And it just makes slow and steady income every day. I don't have to really care about it. I have an operations team that's in charge. And um, that allows me to have some income to funnel the rest of my businesses. And then my third experiment was in PET. Um, PET is kind of like, you, you know what, you know you go on dates, right? And then you meet different men or women qualified and you're like, after so many, you're like, oh, I don't think I'm ever going to meet the right person. And so that was how it was with all the startups that I, for the 26 different startups. And finally, when I met PET, two years later they were still alive. I was like, okay, this is the one. It's like, this is the guy I'm going to marry. This is the star I'm going to join. So I was very thrilled when I had the opportunity to join them as a co-founder. This PT was um, very, in, in a nutshell, they do, we do recycled plastics. So we take recycled plastic bottles and make it into uh, polyester fabric. Polyester is 60% of the world's fabric. So this is a huge market. And we don't do anything fashionable or fancy. We do school uniforms, we do tablecloth, we do curtains. You know, like the most uninteresting things. But that's what the bulk is, and that's what the mass market is. And what I want to, I want to end off by saying that check the market reaction. When the market is ready and it's in your favor, it's like a wind is blowing behind you. You can't stop, even if you want to. You can't. If not, you you fall down. You, there's so many forces in the market that's blowing at you. Make sure that that is the right decision for you and check for that kind of market reaction. If you're on that, you are on a rocket ship, go for it, don't ever stop. And if anyone is interested to hear more about um, what we do as a company, please come and talk to me. My name is Jane again. Thank you so much for your time.